Okay, guys, we are back with another fun interview. We are live at the Bali Conference in Grand Rapids. I'm really excited. We've got uh, pretty much one of the, the main local Bali guys for West Michigan Grand Rapids with us today. We've got Guy Bazzani. Guy is the president and CEO of Bazzani Associates. They are a sustainable design, construction, and development firm right here in Grand Rapids. And he's responsible for a lot of the really, really cool uh, sustainable design stuff that's going on here. Um, and he's also a leader in the triple bottom line uh, movement, which we're going to talk about. So, Guy, thanks for coming on and talking with us. Thanks for having me. So, why don't you give us kind of a, a quick overview on Bazani Associates, what you guys do, and your involvement in the Local First movement? Well, uh, Bazani Associates was focused on revitalizing the urban core and, and uh, trying to rebuild communities while we're rebuilding buildings and trying to create that transparency and the warmth that you get when you're coming into a neighborhood that's thriving and mm -hmm. that the storefronts are open and you know we had a neighborhood that was especially long wealthy street 95 percent of it was boarded up wow. only nine years ago it was now, that short time ago yes wow now you know let's say 10 years later we only have about 2% of the buildings that are boarded up. So that's an, a, a positive economic story. Absolutely, um, and you've got people that are moving back into that area as well. I mean, so It's a highly desirable area yeah. now from the worst area of in, in, in town to now the most, one of the most desirable. So it, it has really been a gratifying That's very process. cool. Um, so let's talk real quick about Triple Bottom Line and what that means. And, and everybody, you know, I, and I've addressed it a couple times in a couple of the other interviews, but um, which is, you know, uh, economic vitality, social responsibility, and environmental integrity. But you did a nice thing with calling it, you know, people, planet, and profit. I did. The original uh, phraseology uh, was really to really formulate this as a business concept. Mm -hmm. And in the early stages of green building and design and the triple bottom line movement, actually flowed out of good social venturism mm -hmm. where the business is the vehicle for social change. Right. So that wording came out of that. Then now that the uh, general public is using sustainability on a regular basis, <laughs> we, we first got together, we did a, a, a survey of a thousand people, a uh, phone survey, and asked them to talk about sustainability or define it, they had no clue what it <laughs> meant, and that was only 10 years ago. We put it on our front window anyway mm -hmm. and pushed it forward. Now we're to people, planet, profit, which is a lot more approachable. The general public gets it, yep. and the uh, business community has adopted the triple bottom line now, as Fred Keller and others right. um, uh, have adopted it, so people, planet, profit is really the story we want to tell. Absolutely, yeah. um, I, and I think it's a good, uh, it's interesting and intriguing. Obviously, that's a big part of what uh, Bali is. I mean, Bali is a lot about you know business alliances and 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 keeping it local. Um, you got companies like Cascade Engineering that still have a sustainable business model, and they're actually speaking at the conference. Uh, triple bottom line, but they're a global company. So um, you can it's, it really does apply to all businesses, whether it's a, a local development group like yourself, all the way up to global companies. Right. Well, Fred just spoke. I, I, in fact, I introduced him today. So oh, uh, he said by really looking at his waste stream and really paying attention, he saved three hundred thousand a year. He's That's close. Worthwhile. He's close to zero uh, waste right now. Zero waste. It's that's either a, that's recycled, it's taken out. It's you know you it's always a, have some churn. Right. But uh, he's he's they're doing very very well. That's very cool. Um, so let's talk about uh, Bizani and some of the projects that you guys have going on. Because My favorite part. I, I, I thought it might be. Um, I it, hate what I do. It's clear. It's, it is very clear. And actually, I have to I have to give credit because Guy is one of the one of the, actually probably the primary reason that that we're at the Bali conference at all. So I met you at the Start Garden Breakfast, and um, you were like, "Hey, you need to be here because a lot of what Biz West Michigan is doing and the other sites that I've got." is focused on this. Made a lot of sense. It did. So yeah. um, I got to say thank you to, to you no, for bringing this in. You're welcome. Um, but some of the projects that you've got um, are also some of my favorite places as well. Um, so you were responsible for the Marie Katrib's building. Right. The uh, East Hill Center of, of the, the universe. universe. I love that. I just, I that comes from the sign that is still in Marie's, yep. uh, 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 done by Reb Roberts. That was the only thing on that site for about 10 years. <laughs> the uh, Shell Oil tore the gas station out on the left. And, the neighborhood was left with a blank lot, so they right. put a sign on it, and it is the center of the East Hills neighborhood. 
Awesome. So, so and there, I mean, that's a, a that is a lead certified building. That is a double gold, first in double the U.S. Double gold. And it is also a zero. First in the U.S.? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And it's uh, also a zero stormwater discharge site, which means no, it is not connected to storm sewer at all. It evaporates the stormwater that falls on it off the roof or biofilters it through the rain garden and recharges groundwater. We're not, we have no connection to storm. Awesome. <laughs> um, plus, they have really good food. Well, that helps. It does. You know? help. And there's some there's some good Marie retail stuff going on there. The beauty of that is Marie couldn't be a better choice. I couldn't have picked out of anyone in the world a better person to be on that corner. Her sense of community is absolutely. She's all about the neighborhood. She's all about the people every day. It's a beautiful. Both her thing. customers and her employees, because she and takes great care of her people too. The other end of the building is Wemiac. We built this building as a sustainable model for Bazzani Associates as as one of our. Are, uh, is just, just to show off our approach. Right. Okay. Weemiak was looking for a place to ask us about, and I said, well, you might want to look at this place that's just being built right now. I think it would meet your needs. And they looked at it, and they said, well, we always thought we were going to build something for ourselves. Don't. But they just <laughs> said, this is it. We'll take that. Yeah. Awesome. So that, was um, a, that was a nice pat on the back. How about uh, one of the other hip, cool places? And one of the things that I... The reason that I want to bring these up is, is that they're all cool, fun places. They're all really neat spaces, but they're also sustainable. And so they're environmentally friendly. They're good for the people. They're good for the community. Um, 924 Cherry, where Greenwell is. That building is another insulated concrete form building like Marie Catrebe's, where our insulated blocks go all the way underground four feet. So your whole thermal envelope is very protected. Greenwell themselves took it a step further, and we installed a modulating hood that adjust the fan speed on their kitchen hood to the amount of smoke that's in it. Really? Yeah. Saves a lot of energy because typically they're just on. Right. They're on, on all day. And they kick it out. This actually has a, a couple lasers that measure it, a couple sensors that measure it, and actually modulates the hood that saves them quite a bit of energy. We, they also were very conscious of making sure it was an energy efficient space the, mm -hmm. as the interior improvement. We built, built that out for them. Uh, the building achieved Elite Silver and we're just finishing up a certification on the interior. We're waiting for some food systems information to uh, move forward on that. Very cool. Um, now, uh, how about your building? You don't have anything to say about your building, do you? 959 Wealthy? Our offices? Yeah. And the offices of Local First. The, the world headquarters <laughs> world of World headquarters. My tiny little world. <laughs> Center of the universe for Brazani, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that is uh, the first LEED certified building in the city of Grand Rapids. It is a uh, LEED Very Silver. Cool. It is also a historic preservation building, National Register, used historic tax credits as part of its financing. But that building pioneered the use of high performance glazing in historic buildings. It was not allowed by the National Park Service until that building. We lobbied to have a special clear low E glass made by Pilkington. Uh, we really pressed on uh, having them accept that nationally as a standard and they, and they did. It was an awesome thing. I mean, literally, we took glass and put it, went to uh, Lansing and put glass up on a on a deck, much like this, mm -hmm. and uh, picked the clearest one. They picked it. It was the low E mix because the uh, older glazing is uh, actually a little bit green. So uh, we actually have a very transparent storefront, and the performance um, quality of that glass gave us about a ten percent bump on our energy efficiency. Now, what um, you live in that building? I understand. I live upstairs. And, but you have a lawn. I have a sedum lawn, you know. There, it's a succulent plant that is Rip. a green roof. It's called an extensive green roof. It's only about four inches thick. But uh, you cannot believe how cool and comfortable it is on my deck in the middle of that uh, green roof. It's like standing in the street versus standing on a lawn. Right. The temperature difference is dramatic. Now, the reason I bring that up and I, that I just makes me all giggly and happy inside <laughs> is that that was a historic building. Right. And it's lead, and it's green, and it's sustainable. So you can have your cake and eat it, too. I mean, you can have all of it going well, on. Uh, my love for historic buildings goes all the way back to when we did Gibson's, which is now mm -hmm. Majambos. And I, I love to preserve history, but I also know that if the buildings cannot perform like new buildings or better, which this one performs about 40% better than a new building. Right. Uh, we won't have these historic resources because eventually the community won't be able to afford it. Right. 
So they, they tend to go to ruin when they can't be sustained. So, because um, I'm a huge fan of the older architecture, absolutely love it, but I also love the modern stuff and you can have, you can have it all going on. So right. I think our neighborhood shows that. I think it does as well. Um, so one of the other buildings, uh, obviously you've got the Phoenix building, which is, yeah. was an interesting situation. Yeah, unfortunately, the predecessor to that building blew up from a natural gas leak outside of the building, under right. the sidewalk, and seeped in. And uh, Fortunately, nobody was hurt. That was right across the street from Yesterdog. I think and 17 people were in the building. And they all got out. They all got out. Including kids. There were some kids in the building, yeah, too. Yeah, it's... Pretty scary. And you look at what it... It leveled it. It was flat. <laughs> it was crazy. It, it was all in the basement. Yep. The entire building. Uh, pretty frightening. So we took that site, and we... We had uh, the former owners called me and says, we want you to do this property. Cool. So nice we, uh, we built it out for them, and then we bought it from them. Uh, it's just achieved a LEED Gold certification. It has apartments on the top floor and a, uh, two businesses on the first floor. One is a PT360 physical yep. therapy, and the other one is an African-American business that's been in town for some time called All City Kicks. Yep. Great uh, spot. Shoe store, right? Yeah, shoe yep. store. Very cool stuff. Um, and I watched that building going up, and uh, it was fun to watch it. And uh, Tight site. Very small. Yeah, very, <laughs> very tight footprint. Um, the last one, uh, your kind of your fun and exciting new building is the Kingsley Building. The Kingsley Building, a five-story building on the corner of Robinson Road and Lake Drive, which was boarded up for so long, no one saw the building. It was hiding in plain sight. It was sight. invisible. Yeah. Drove by it all the time, and you'd see the record, you know, the Kent Record Storage or Kent, whatever it was. What, and what I call from the paranoid architectural period. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Boarded up with a gravel storefront that if you touched it with your knuckles, you'd cut your hand. Yep. And uh, we peeled it open, restored the ceramic underneath, put the storefronts back into uh, historic standards, and we're hoping to get a National Register nomination on the building to uh, maintain its integrity. Now there's something really cool going in there, which is the Trillium Haven restaurant. Yes. Kind of a new concept for West Michigan, I understand. Well, farm to table isn't new, but these are farmers that have grown all the organic produce for everybody in town that partnered with a restaurateur to create a farm. To table, truly farm to table. Yeah, we and own the farm, farm and we, we own, own the, the table. <laughs> right. Um, so, very nicely done. And you're going to have 100 seats inside, and then you've got a really cool little patio that's going to be 30 seats there. outside. Outside. That's yeah. going to be very fun. I can't wait until it opens. Uh, it, it'll be a very fun location. Uh, we've got neighboring that, we've got a Copse of Books yep. that has a storefront and 17,000 square feet of books on the second floor uh, that supplies their used book. Yep, system. and they're, that's kind of kind of turning into a used book hub in that whole area right. down there. Right. Um, all right, so uh, we're going all over the charts on this on this interview, but one of the things that um, that you and I chatted about about a, probably about a year ago at Triumph Music Academy, which is in your building, right, um, was the concept of the construction and development costs of what you're doing from a sustainable mm -hmm. concept versus traditional. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about? Well, we, we saw a need uh, in the initial stages when I put the company together, I saw a need to really have architects on staff because I wanted to uh, work with people to understand design in a holistic fashion. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of folks at that time that were resisting the kind of things I wanted to create. Today, architects abound that really embrace LEED certification Absolutely. and, and uh, sustainable building, so it's all great. Um, what the myth out there is that green building costs more. Yep. All right, so we had a little bit of a tech glitch there. We, uh, we actually filled up a card. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to cut in here, and we'll start over again. So construction development costs of a sustainable nature um, versus traditional. Why don't you kind of touch on that? And First off, you have to have a holistic design strategy to be efficient in this green building world. You have to think as the project as a whole. Mm -hmm. And that is very much helps uh, a sustainable project move forward. What we find is, and the stats are roughly, if you have a building designed traditionally and you try to make it green, it's going to cost you 20% more. Wow. Okay. If you design a building with a green soul at heart, mm -hmm. okay, it will cost you about 2 to 5% more, and you'll recover that money in 2 to 5 years. Okay. So that's so pretty much... If Where you get it into geothermal, that's going to push the building return on investment out maybe seven years. But you can have a gold level building with a return in five 
we can build a silver level building at the same cost as standard construction. So there's not a really an upcharge. To there is not an upcharge. It, we've had more practice, you know, mm -hmm. in doing that because we had to appeal to the the general banking and appraisal market. We were, <laughs> we're not philanthropists or institutions that can afford to do this as a moniker. We did it as an economic engine. So really, then it's there if they want to go forward with a new building. There's really not that much of an upcharge to do go from a sustainable format. It's, it would be crazy to do anything else. You're going to save 40% on your energy costs, so you pay it back in two years, and it's the gift that keeps on giving. giving. Exactly. Yeah. Um, or if I wanted to, if I had an existing building, I could even go backwards as well. I mean, I could if I'm right. going to refurb a building, then well, it makes sense to redevelop it, and and like we did with the other buildings, like Kingsley and all the other stuff. Yeah, it's just like the uh, our headquarters. We foam the interior walls, right. and then and then put our infrastructure and electricity in those, you know, and phone and systems. And, drywall that. And, and it's, it's a very, beautiful building. I you've mean, been in it. It's very yeah. polished looking. It's not, yeah. uh, we, we left nothing out. Well, but it still has the old charm. I mean, that's that's the thing that I always get freaked out about is when you walk into some of these houses and you're like, mm, what did you do? You know, you took all the charm out of the house. Why did you do that? Or the building, the right, office building. Right. Um, you walk into your, that, especially that building, like I said, and, and I've been at Triumph Music Academy and kids took yeah. lessons and stuff there. And um, you walk up the stairs and you still have, you know, you have the charm of some of the stuff that goes with an old building, um, but you get the conveniences of the new buildings as yeah. well. So very cool stuff. Um, so you got a lot of stuff going on. Um, we'll have some links to your site and a couple of other projects that you've got going on uh, on the site yeah. uh, underneath the interview. Um, we're going to hit you up to do some more stuff from a Biz West Michigan standpoint <laughs> here fairly soon. So we'll do the right. traditional Skype one, which right. is not, this ain't Skype, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, Guy, I really appreciate you taking time to chat with us and, and dealing with our technical glitches. Like Thanks again for having me. You're welcome. All right. So, That's great. Guys, again, we're at the Bali Conference uh, with Guy Bazzani, and hope everybody enjoyed the interview, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.